Hello beautiful souls, this is Nikita Parkov and I'm back with a new love story and using the paradigm explain a bit about the twin flame uh, relationship and equation and let's get on to it. Today the story that I have brought to you is another historic story. You will find again many versions to it and uh, there are a few things that have been kind of erased from the history and you'll understand why and uh, this is um, especially today I'm talking uh, about this story because though I was dying to do another one but um, there are a few of the divine feminines who are actually carrying the masculine energies and they don't seem to find enough representation or archetypes in the maybe histories or in the twin flame templates which is not true so the story today uh, that i've brought to you is that of a warrior princess or a queen a sultan a woman who's a sultan yes razia sultan and yakut now to understand Razia's story, we have to go back a little, a generation before her. Razia's father, Iltmush, Iltutmush, <laughs> uh, he was essentially a slave and he was actually with um, Qutubuddin Ebak, who was the first Sultan of Delhi and he was a very very favorite of Qutubuddin Ebak who made him rise in ranks and was very impressed with his loyalty his brains his administration powers and so he grew rank to rank uh, he was so loved by Ebak the Sultan a slave that he gave his own daughter Qutubuddin Ebak gave his own daughter Qutub Begum in marriage to Iltutmush so Razia their daughter essentially was the daughter of a slave who became a Sultan and the daughter of a Sultan all right this is very important you'll understand why I'll come to that and now Razia Sultan she uh, grew up as the favorite child of her father she did have siblings she did have brothers who were completely uh, useless her father was a very able very beloved ruler he was respected by all he was essentially a Turk okay but in uh, as he came to India the that situation at that time there were a lot of power exchange happening everyone was trying to gain the throne of Delhi it was very charged political times and when the time came when uh, Iltutmush realized he's about to die uh, he had seen his daughter from a very young age that she had the natural gift of administration she was trained as were most princesses even at that time in warfare and uh, so that in case the father was away somewhere she could take care in the absence of her father or her brother or her husband whoever would be the next king or sultan and he realized that she was way more able and way more sorted than her brothers and understanding that it was uh, the Turkish they did not very kindly take to his suggestion or when he made Razia the heir apparent even her own brothers went against her and at all this time see how history now repeats itself Iltutmush who himself was a slave was very fond of another slave who was um, actually uh, from the Abyssinian um, I don't know how to pronounce it but an Abyssinian he's an Abyssinian slave and um, he was a great favorite of Iltutmush 
again for his loyalty for his bravery and uh, because he was very good with the warfare and um, he in fact according to some legends uh, became a teacher to Razia in the arts of war in horse riding in sword in certain things and uh, when uh, Iltutmush realized that the noblemen and the others are not taking too kindly to the fact that he wants Razia to uh, become the heir apparent he entrusted this slave whose name is Yakut uh, and he entrusted his will and his say power of attorney or something and uh, entrusted him to go and speak to the masses and explain why their sultan has chosen their daughter and not the son to take over from him take the reign over from him and so uh, unknown to Iltutmush Razia had fallen in love with Yakut and Yakut too was in love with Razia but he could never act on it he could never even express it and as in most cases he was married so there was a karmic <laughs> now uh, he was beautifully built he was tall dark handsome he was a very brave warrior he could ride like the wind he could take on several men at one day. archetype of the warrior hero and she, please understand, is not the typical nubile nymph and the docile princess. She is a warrior princess herself. So she was very madly in love with Yakul and his strength along with the dynamics made him submissive, submissive to her. And the fact that her father loved and trusted Yakut so much made him really raise in Razia's eyes. Now, the people started accepting when Yakut went around and explained why the king had the sultan had chosen his daughter. The masses started accepting, and so much against the noblemen of that time. Uh, when Iltutmush passed, passed away, Razia did come on the throne. And she turned out to be, as her father had predicted, a wonderful administrator. She was a very brave warrior. She turned out to be a secular ruler. And not only that, when she came to power, she got rid of the of her parda system. She was some uh, one of those who employed female bodyguards for herself she empowered women a lot this I'm talking uh, of the year uh, 1236 when she came on the throne she will she ruled India or Delhi for four years before her very untimely death she was barely 30 years old when she became the Sultan so when she died she was probably 34 35 so now by and by as she becomes the sultan and you know she is warding off she goes to the wars and she is winning the noblemen are feeling very very upset but her story with yakut that crosses all the paradigms and crosses the parameters is the story of a sultan in love with her slave and she starts showing partiality not out of love but because of his ability and starts raising him to the status of becoming a nobleman she practically knights him <laughs> which goes down not too good with the noble noblemen around her enter in the story two people and see how past life karma starts entering your life her brother uh, his name is Rukmuddin 
as well as her childhood friend and later to be her spouse, uh, Altunia. Altunia was her childhood friend who was in love with her and weirdly when she was in love with Yakut and everything his jealousies were really raked up and he plotted with her own brother Rukmuddin to overthrow her so that the brother could take over the kingdom and he would get to marry Razia. There are several versions to this story and uh, one of them says that protecting her and fighting on her behalf Yakut gets killed and uh, in the other one he is uh, protecting her and they both are killed together. Uh, the historical facts say that she was taken prisoner and married off to Althunia but again there was uh, when she tried to take back or fight for getting back the throne that's when she was killed fighting and not at a uh, too, there was not too much distance between Yakut's death and her death the beauty of this love story is an empowered woman a woman who so called stepped into the men's role who was able in every way but was not given the permission to decide her own love life and she said I don't care it's my life it's my heart and this is the man I choose with Yakut he has that beautiful the strong silent personality who was unable to express openly his feelings and when he realizes how much Razia is in love with him he does not know whether to feel happy he does not know whether to respond or he should be the one to tell her that this is not going to be accepted and you're damaging your own reputation you're damaging your future as the Sultan of Delhi you're jeopardizing your own well-being your safety and in true style of love she didn't care she in fact goes to the extent of saying if she could she would give up her kingdom in a snap to be with him now in this beautiful story we see several things one that we have a tendency of repeating certain parental patterns because we carry them so the slave father who married the queen and here the queen who falls in love with the slave we play out our parents patterns the karmics that we have in this story are the brother who betrayed his own sister who was no way worthy of the throne but desired it out of sheer greed for power the childhood best friend and later on spouse who betrayed her over and over again because he could not handle the rejection. He forced, he wanted to take her, he wanted to own her. And then of course um, the wife of Yakut who was aware that her husband is in love with the Sultan, Razia Sultan and she was one of those who never questioned. And became the confidant of the pain of Yakut, the separation and that his object of love was always in front of him everything that he did was in her name but he could never ever express openly what he felt for her and even when she wanted to and being the Sultan she did kind of use it use that position to tease him and uh, you know get him to come and speak to her at odd hours and you know she would ask him to recite stuff for her and you know uh, but it was she was in charge of that she was always taking the lead I hope you are enjoying this beautiful and different love story that I have got to you today and here we are seeing a lot of uh, role reversal you know 
you finding the man is the one who has been kind of held back by the societal pressures and to do the right thing and to not openly express or accept his love and feeling a little helpless in his situation wanting the well-being of his beloved and the woman who took charge and who stepped up and fulfilled her duties responsibilities all she wanted was the freedom to choose her partner and it should not be an alliance for the political reasons or any other reason except love and she thought being the sultan she could bring about that social change she was one of the first women who actually spoke out and said it's my choice as a ruler she refused to wear the parda which was a very bold movement at that time even today women are reluctant to go without you know um the parda in certain communities and because of maybe religious factors but she did and in this love story the usual serenading is done by the men here it was done by the woman so i'm going to leave you with this beautiful story and we'll talk a bit more about this and i will complete uh my reading of certain portions of laila majnu that are remaining i hope you're enjoying my videos i'm waiting for your comments please do like comment share and subscribe to my channel i'm looking forward to hearing from all of you i leave you with a lot of love and light this is nikita bhargav